Hi all, this is Dana here. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to thread your needle uh, using various types of needle threaders and also by hand. Uh, I've actually had quite a few emails recently from people who wanted to start cross stitching, but they didn't actually know how to thread their needle. They'd never been taught and nobody in their family knows how to stitch. So I thought I would address that with various types of needle threaders and also how I uh, do it by hand, which is how I learned how to thread the needles. But first, I'm sure lots of you will recognize this. This is a generic needle threader. You get them in a lot of craft kits and whatnot. Uh, this is a tapestry needle. In, in another video, I'll be going over different types of needles that you can use for stitching, but for this one, it's just about how to thread the needle. So this one is pretty simple to use. Um, the only issue with these ones is they're quite, they're not that well made and the little, where the little filaments, metal filaments are anchored here, they pull out really easily. So you do have to be quite gentle with them. But the way you do it is you put your little filament through the eye of the needle, get your thread, uh, depending on whether you're using one strand or two, you'd put that many strands through the eye, put that through there like that, pull it just long enough. Sorry, the thread's getting a little bit staticky. Pull it through enough so that it's not going to fall out and then you gently pull it through and hey presto there's your needle threaded so same if you did two strands exactly the same technique so that's using this little metal one here another one that i just recently purchased is this one it's a clover it's called clover that's the brand name uh, here's the little package here so it's quite neat and it, it's this is designed for tapestry needles and wider needles and it's also really good if you're using thick threads you can see it's quite sturdy so the little metal things aren't going to come out I mean I'm sure you could pull them out if you really really tried but I, I wouldn't obviously try that but it's great if you're trying to thread uh, bigger needles with thicker threads or more difficult threads like say if they're fluffy or something like that so same thing you'd put your tip of your threader through push it through until it catches. This one's nice because you can just kind of let the needle hang. Again, you'd grab your thread, put your thread through, pull it through enough, and then pull it back. It's got a little bit of a spring to it, so just be aware of that when you're pulling it through. And then catch one of the ends so you don't pull it all the way through again. So yeah, so that's the clover one. I quite like that one. It's got a nice little cap too, so you can keep it protected and so you don't accidentally sit on it as you're working or whatnot. And it's got a little hanger here too, so you can hang it onto a necklace or hang it onto a key fob or uh, your scissor fob, whatever you tend to want to use when you're stitching. So that's that one. Uh, here is one called a Loran hook. So this is kind of cool. That's the package there. This is metal, so obviously this isn't going to work for really fine needles, but it is really neat and it is very sturdy. A lot of, I've heard a lot of stitchers say they really, really like this one. So you can, uh, depending on the size of the eye of your needle, you can either through it through the bigger end or the smaller end. But the nice thing about this, you can actually put it quite a way through. The nice thing about this one is you don't have to thread it through the hole, is you just catch it. You just catch your floss. So in this case, get your floss and you just hook it around the little hook like that hold your needle pull it through and obviously catch one of the other ends so you don't pull it all the way through and hey presto so that's actually a really really handy one if you're using um, bigger needles like I said this wouldn't work for something like a beading needle because it's not quite small enough and the last one last sweater I will show you are these really cool ones. These are actually designed, they're really really handy for uh, if you have a serger sewing machine that uh, finishes up the edges or if you have uh, like a sewing machine. These are really handy because they're really really fine and delicate as you can see and they, you can see there's a little tiny loop at the end so that's actually what anchors your floss so it doesn't uh, slide out as you're trying to pull it through your needle. So these are great. They actually do fit into beading needles, but um, depending on the type of thread you're using, it might be too thick to actually pull it through the beading needle once the thread's in there. So you'd have to try, there's various sizes of beading needles. But yeah, it is really handy. It's very good for very fine-eyed needles. So again, I'll grab my, my big tapestry needle here. Feed that through, grab my thread, feed 
that through and you can actually give it a little pull and that will actually anchor it into that little tiny loop there and then you can see you can you can move this all over the place and it's the thread's not going anywhere pull it through and then just un just pull it out Ta -da! threaded needle amazing i know it's like magic yeah so these are actually really cool especially if you use a lot of finer needles and you're having a hard time seeing also if if you're using finer needles and you're having a hard time seeing the eye a magnifying either a magnifying glasses or like a little handheld one or uh, like a mag magnifying light that a lot of stitchers use that's really really handy when you're threading needles another little tip is to actually get say like a white card like this is a card and put it behind the needle eye and you can see how much easier it is to see that eye and exactly where it is all right so what i'm going to show you is how to how i thread the needle which is folding it in half so if you are using the loop method um i've got some videos about that i will uh to start your threads i'll put a link in the description below what you're going to do is you're going to get your threads so that the same length either side so that the same distance apart there so together get your loop there's a couple ways you can do this if your eye is big enough obviously you can just slip the loop through the eye like that easy enough if the eye is a little bit smaller Here's one trick that my mom taught me when I was learning how to sew when I was a kid. So if you grab, sorry, my nails might be in the way. Basically what you're doing is you're folding your floss over the eye and you're going to fold it really tight. So you're, you're actually pulling this quite tightly and then squishing your fingers together as tight as you can. Well, not like as tight as you can, but really tight. So you're basically squashing the floss. Then you can put sort of carefully like push the eye over those little ends and then you can push it through and obviously catch your ends and there you go there's your threaded loop so that's, that's this is how i actually thread pretty much all of my needles is i do that I, I do this little folding method over the eye of the needle and for me it works really really well it does take a bit of practice and if you're using slightly thicker threads with a slightly smaller needle it might be really tricky to do but just give it a go and uh, yes that's how I actually don't use needle threaders unless it's a, a needles being particularly difficult or I'm using a specialty thread that's getting hard another thing that you can do that a lot of stitchers do is they will um, get their floss a good tip if you're threading it straight through the eye of the needle like that is to get your scissors and make sure you got a nice sharp end uh, you can even cut cut it at a bit of an angle and that will kind of almost make a point on the end and that will actually make threading a lot easier obviously this is a really giant needle for this but it'll make threading a lot easier another little tip too is if you're threading a needle and it's proving to be kind of difficult i'll grab another needle as a demonstration this one's a little easier to see so you can see how the needle has a little channel in it this one has it on both sides a little groove on both sides that's actually meant to guide your thread so it's easier to thread so you as you're if you're threading it this way you push it right through there and that little channel actually guides guides your thread so that's what that little groove is for in case you never knew and it also sort of helps protect the needle from getting chafed as it's going through your fabric it's like that so that little if if you um, are having issues check and see which side of the needle that little groove is and that will help you as well uh, another method that some people do is they actually lick the end of their thread and put that through that does help actually keep it together the only problem with doing that is is that can actually rust out your needle eye in which case you might find that your uh, threads start getting a little bit frayed or they start getting naughty it's because the inside of your needle eye is actually starting to get worn away and it's shred it's starting to slowly shred the texture of, of your floss and it can actually break your floss as well uh, another alternative to licking your ends is and also don't lick your ends if you're using hand dyed floss that's you don't know what chemicals you might be ingesting um 
this stuff is thread heaven. It's a it's a thread lubricant. Now I know people are going absolutely bananas right now because uh, thread heaven is uh, they're closing up shop. They're not selling this anymore. Uh, but basically, all this is is a silicone. So I've heard that, uh, silicone earplugs that you can get for like swimmers. That's exactly the same stuff. It's like a silicone putty. So you'd basically just run your run your floss through it. Uh, you can also, there's a brand called Thread Magic, and that's actually got a better container than this one anyway, because it's got little slots in the side so you can drag your floss through it and get the stuff. It's basically a, a lubricant. Uh, wax, beeswax also works. I wouldn't use candle wax, but beeswax can work as well. It just basically smooths the fibers of your floss down a little bit. It's actually really handy for certain metallics um, and satin threads because they're a little bit slippery, so it helps make them a little more... Um, not, I don't want to say sticky, but it helps keep, give them a little bit more texture so they don't slide around your needle as much and give you as many problems. And this stuff doesn't affect your thread at all. It doesn't affect how it ages or or it doesn't dirty your, your fabric or anything like that. I have heard of people using um, one of these for dark threads and one for lighter threads, but, you know, that's up to you. So that's pretty much it. That's all of my tips for how to thread a needle. If you have any other ones, please feel free to leave uh, them in the comments below. I love uh, learning new things and, and other people obviously can learn as well by reading the comments. Uh, if you have any questions, please contact me. Uh, if you uh, see the little link that's going to pop up on your right, you'll see that there's uh, some free patterns available on my site so you can practice uh, stitching and just generally have some more little projects to stitch up. And that's it for now. Talk to you later. Bye for now.